against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dave Robbins with End Time Ministries, and I want to thank you for joining me today on the End of the Age program on Wednesday's segment. I'm filling in for Irvin Baxter today. He's taking a little bit of much needed R&R, and so we're happy to, to um, let him take that time off. He goes 90 to nothing all the time if you know anything about him, and so we're um, happy to participate and let him uh, take a few days off here much needed rest. And so uh, th I do thank you for joining me today. And we're going to be talking about um, a move towards a world government. So one of the topics I want to discuss on today's program, obviously the moves towards a one world government. I'm going to prove to you that this is happening by discussing the ongoing process of globalization. Now, you might be saying, well, come on, Dave, you and Irvin are always talking about this. Well, that's absolutely right. We are. And you say, well, why? Because you have to understand that the Bible prophesies that just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ in the Battle of Armageddon, a world government will be established. And this world government will eventually be ran by the, the Antichrist. So why is this important to you and me right now? Well, it's absolutely critical that we understand that we will live through this world governing body. This world government's going to be established. Just It's already actually established right now with the establishment of the United Nations, the United Nations Charter in 1945. It's the globalists' effort towards a one world government. And they've been working this whole time to do away with the borders of all the nations and to create a global community. You've heard of the international community. Well, it's the one world government's effort to create a one world state that answers to a one world government. That's the goal. And so that's why we need to talk about it because the Bible prophesies it will be in power just prior to and at the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ and the Battle of Armageddon. So we're going to live through this. And what we, our effort in talking about this all the time is that we want to, number one, prove to you that we're in the end time by showing you that there's a, this world government is already established, which lets us know conclusively we're living in the last days. We're already in the end time. And to, to give you a heads up, you don't ever want to comply or to conform with this one world governing system. Why? The Bible says that the Antichrist or the, the Satan gives the Antichrist his seat, his power and his great authority. Satan is behind this move towards a one world governing body. The Lord is completely against this one world government. We used to say all the time when, we, when the show was called Politics and Religion, we would say that politics is Satan's method of ruling the world and the church is God's method of ruling the world. And that's so true. At the second coming of Jesus Christ, he's coming back to fight on behalf of Israel and he's going to destroy human, the human one world government that's set up. All the governments on earth, he's going to establish his government on the earth and that will be the kingdom of God and it will reign for the next 1,000 years. The saints will rule and reign with him for that next 1,000 year period, the millennial reign here on earth. So that's what he's coming back to do. Well, we're just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ and this world government's already established and it's got its tentacles all throughout the earth, even here in the United States. So... Let's listen to the prophecy of the one world government in the end time. It's found in Revelation chapter 13, 
verses 1 through 8, and it states this. And I'm going to slow down. I want to go very slowly because I want you to really listen to these scriptures. I'm going to read eight scriptures here, and there's so much packed into these scriptures. And so let's read down through here because I really want you to understand that a one world government is prophesied for these last days. So Revelation chapter 13, it actually describes the one world government, the one world religion and the, the one world government and the leader of that one world government, the one world religion and the leader of that religion, the false prophet at the time of the Antichrist and then the enforcement method, which we know it as the mark of the beast, which they're going to economically sanction individuals to conform to their edicts. So the world government is mentioned in, chap in chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. And so let's read down here really slowly because I want you to understand this prophecy. Starting with verse 1, and it says, and I, this is John, and he said, I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns were ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of the bear, his mouth as the mouth of the lion, and the dragon, which is Satan, Revelation chapter 12, verse 9 tells us that, the dragon gave him his seat, his, his power, his seat, and his great authority. So we know that the, the driving force behind this one world governing system is Satan himself. He's trying to establish his world governing body because he knows God's coming back to set up his, but he's an unbeliever. And he believes that he'll be able to overthrow God and his kingdom at the battle of Armageddon. And so consequently, he's trying to establish his world governing body in the world. Why? Because he wants everybody to worship him. Listen to it and it'll tell you that here in a second. Verse three, and it says, and I saw one of the heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. That's this world governing body that's going to be established. And this, the, the beast, the combo beast in Revelation 13 is uh, foretelling the world government that will be established. These beasts represent nations. And so uh, it says that the whole world, in verse 3, that the whole world wondered after the beast. Most of the nations on earth will yield up their sovereignty to this one world governing body and the Antichrist. Verse 4 says, And they worship the dragon, or Satan, which gave power unto the beast. That Satan's goal is to get everybody to worship him. And they worship the beast, or the Antichrist, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 42 months. So he, the Antichrist, when he's revealed at the abomination of desolation, He's going to continue 42 months, that final three and a half years, which is the great tribulation. And he's going to have power. He's, his government, world government is going to be fully functioning at that point. It's going to have teeth. It's going to have enforcement methods. And uh, that's during the great tribulation. Verse six states, and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell therein. And it was given unto him to make war against the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him uh, over ever, all kindreds, tongues, and nations. So it's a world governing body that's going to be established. And Satan is, is the power. It's the force that's behind this entity. And he's going to give, be given power over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. It's a world governing body. And... Then verse 8 says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, notice verse 8. This is very key, and this is what I want you to notice here. It says, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life slain from the foundation of the world. So it's very key that you understand that. How does this affect you and I? Well, you need to be make, make yourself ready and make sure your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Because the Bible says right here in verse 8, everyone whose name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, 
Everyone, every individual who's not been born again, according to the, New, to the New Testament plan of salvation, the Bible says that they will yield up their sovereignty and worship this, the Antichrist in his one world governing system. So make absolutely sure, number one, in your life, that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and that you have been born again according to the New Testament plan of salvation. If you don't understand what being born again means, you say, well, I've heard that term, but I, I, I think I've done everything. And, you know, I've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. I've accepted him into my heart. Well, that's the beginning of salvation. That's not the entire plan of salvation, just simply to believe or to accept him into your heart. There's more to salvation than that. So if you, if you want to know what the true plan of salvation is called being born again, all of the steps... You can either call 1-800-END-TIME and ask for a free brochure. What do you mean born again? You can go to our website, endtime.com, and right down in the very center of the page, there's a question. What do you mean born again? Click on that, and there's a whole article that Irvin Baxter wrote probably 30-plus years ago now, almost 40 years ago. And the, the brochure is called, What Do You Mean Born Again? You can read it on our website. Or you can email me, drobbins at endtime.com, and I'll send you a copy. Because more important than anything that we do is that you make sure that you're ready to go. Um, and that is to participate in the New Testament plan of salvation called being born again. That Jesus Christ came and died to purchase this plan of salvation. So make sure your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's number one. Because the Bible says everybody that doesn't do that will worship the Antichrist and his one world governing system. So this world government is it's actually already established and the Antichrist will take control of this world governing body in the near future. And he's already doing it. I can prove to you many, many ways. There's hundreds of articles that are talking about this. But one of the most prominent ways is the moves towards um, the process of globalization happening and the move towards this one world governing body. The number one goal of globalists is to have supreme power over the world. The way that they have to do that, besides a world religion and different things, they have to get everybody in the world to yield up their sovereignty, to do away with borders. That's one of their main goals. We got to tear down nation states. We can't have one nation that's over here by themselves that uh, signs declaration of independence and different things. We can't have that. We've got to tear down borders and have all of them yield up their sovereignty to this one world governing body. That's their solution. And that's what they believe in their heart should happen. People who believe in a one world governing body. And so we're seeing that in many ways with, through the sustainable development goals. I mean, through um, the process of globalization, all the different things that are happening where they're trying to do away with nation states and to usurp their authority over the citizens of the world. Well, recently, um, the Washington Post had an article and it stated that Obama warns against a crude sort of nationalism that is taking root in the U.S., so the article states, speaking at a joint news conference with Greek Prime Minister Alexei Tsipras by his side, Obama ref refrained from criticizing President-elect Donald Trump directly as he discussed the impact of his electoral victory last week. But the president made it clear that he sees a dark side to the kind of populist movement that Trump's campaign embodied or ideals that other conservative leaders are advocating in Europe and elsewhere. In other words, uh, defecting from this world governing body that's taking shape and stating, no, we, we don't want to be a part of that. We want to be our own entity, which the United States decided that way back in 1776 when we signed the Declaration of Independence. But people who believe in a global governance, gl global government, they're totally against that. And so... The United States is kind of the last bastion of freedom on the earth today. Most of the other nations are pretty much yielded up their sovereignty to the United Nations and are pretty much just yielding uh, to their edicts. However, the United States has kind of refrained from that in a lot of ways. 
But the past few presidents have yielded up a lot of our sovereignty already. And that's why people started screaming against Donald Trump when he started saying, I'm going to build a wall. They didn't want anything to do with that because he's coming against their the establishment or their system of global governance. Remember, one of their main goals is to do away with the borders of the world and to have one global community that enters to a world governing body. So anybody that wants to build a wall and protect their borders, they're totally against that. And so that's why the, 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 the globalists around the world were screaming at Donald Trump when he come along and said, I'm going to build a wall. They were totally against that. So Obama went on to state in the article, he stated this when he was given the speech, we are going to have to guard against a rise in a crude sort of nationalism or ethnic identity or tribalism that is built around an us versus them. In other words, like the United States versus the United Nations or the world. And I will never apologize. This is Obama. I will never apologize for saying that the future of humanity and the future of the world is going to be defined by what we have in common as opposed to those things that separate us and ultimately lead us into conflict. So he's saying that nationalism is a bad thing. And we don't ever we don't want to put walls up. We want to tear our walls down. And we want to allow people to free flow into this country. Doesn't matter where they from, where they're from, because we want we're, Obama and his the, the his the other elitist or globalist internationalist, everyone who believes in a one world governing body, they want to do away with borders and they want to have this global government system that controls the one global nation. They don't even want to have nation states. So you say, well, what is nationalism? What, what is he saying is a bad thing? Well, number one, it's a feeling that people have um, of being loyal to and proud of their country. Are you loyal and proud of your country, of the United States? Well, o President Obama is saying that's a bad thing. And then it, secondly, nationalism is a desire by a large group of people to form a separate and independent nation of their own. Moving on. And so you say, well, what's that? Well, that's the Declaration of Independence. And so the Declaration of Independence signed in 1776 is our document of nationalism. And President Obama, a short, what, 240 plus years later, is saying, this is a bad thing. We need to do away with that. So he's saying that we might as well rip up the doc, de, uh, Declaration of Independence and throw it in the trash can. Does it, because it doesn't conform to their ideology of this one world governing body. So in order to protect the American way of life, borders were established originally and they have been protected ever since up until the last few years when the, the, the border agents have pretty much been told, let everybody just cross. And then, of course, President-elect Trump, while he was campaigning, said, well, hey, I'm going to go down there. I've been endorsed by these the border agents and I'm going to reinforce that if I become president. And that's what we're we'll actually see what he does. I'm interested to see what President Trump, President elect Trump will do compared to what he campaigned on, because there's a big difference. I can say anything I want to on a campaign trail. But when I get in office and I have to enforce that, that's what I'm really watching to see what President elect Trump does. I hope he does a lot of things that he said while on the campaign trail because I liked a lot of things that he said because it goes, it flies directly in the face of this one world governing body. You say, well, why are you against a global government? Because I know, remember, who is the force behind this one world governing body? It's Satan. Remember, the Bible says the dragon give the Antichrist in this world governing body his seat, his power, and his great authority. So anything that this world government is trying to establish, I'm against. They're tr they, they would try to do away with the nation state. I'm absolutely for a nation state. I'm for having borders, defensible borders. I don't want to let terrorists and all these, everybody else that wants to come in. Sure, they can come in, but uh, people can come into the country. I'm not against that. But they should come in legally and be vetted. I don't want terrorists to come in in these mass 
uh, uh, these mass um, deals where they're bringing all of these terrorists and different things in from overseas, all these refugees. I don't want them letting just anybody come in here. I have a family. I have a city. I, 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 have, I have a country that I want to protect. It's the last bastion of freedom on earth today. The United States of America is the greatest nation. I've been all over the world. I've traveled a lot. We here, all of us, the, 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 a lot of us here at End Time have traveled all over the world. And believe me, folks, I'm telling you, the United States is absolutely, in 2016, it's absolutely beyond anything the greatest nation on earth. We still, in, in many respects, love God, and I believe we still are a Christian nation, even though some people in the current administration would say that we're not. I still believe we're a Christian nation. Have there been people that have done a lot of things wrong? Sure, absolutely. I mean, the Supreme Court legalizing same-sex marriage in all 50 states, that is a horrendous act. It flies, it, basically they said, we don't believe the Bible and the way God defined marriage as between one man and one woman, we believe that two men and two women should be able to get married. That, the Bible says that that's an abomination. But yet you have people in the current administration, the Supreme Court, that voted against that and said, no, we believe that we're going to legalize same-sex marriage in this country in all 50 states. You realize up until 1960, the, the act of sodomy was against the law. It was a criminal act in all 50 states up until 1960. Now here we are the, in um, 2016, and it's, a le it's completely legal in all 50 states. What kind of a downturn did we take? It was, it, it, it's a horrendous act. But I still choose to believe that there are a faction of Christian individuals in this nation that are against that. I do, I do not believe the majority of people in this nation are for same-sex marriage. It, you can't, if you believe in the Bible at all, you can't endorse same-sex marriage. You simply cannot do it. But the, the people, we're talking about a world government today, the United Nations, the globalists, the internationalists, they're all, they're all for that. They, these people believe in a one world government and they, they don't really care what you believe or what you do as long as you pay obeisance to them in the end. And so let's move on. The, the, um, those that believe in a one world government, internationalists, the globalists, that they believe in a, they, in, in a world government and they advocate the removal of the borders of the nation state and the creation of a global community that will answer to that one world government. Hence the term open borders. You've heard that all through the campaign. Open borders, open borders. Hillary Clinton was for opening the borders. Donald Trump was for building a wall and putting a door in the wall and saying, you got to come through legally. They were diametrically opposed on this issue. Well, the open borders that Mr. Obama is advocating, advocated in his speech in Greece, just a, I think it was yesterday morning, it's nothing more than the ongoing process of globalization, which will lead straight into a world government. Globalization is the process of eliminating the nation state structure and creating one global nation that will answer to a single global government or the, and the management of the world by that one world government. The global government that the global elitists are establishing is the exact same world government prophesied in Revelation to be in power at the second coming of Jesus Christ and the battle of Armageddon. It is the very world government that the Antichrist will rule over in the end time. It's very critical. Do you remember the, the uh, and you say, well, all this is just happening. No, no, no. This has been going on for years. We're at the culmination of this that everything that they wanted to create is falling into place. The Bible says it's going to happen that way. And we're, it's proving to you that we absolutely are in the end time. Do you remember Strobe Talbot's article, The Birth of a Global Nation? Strobe Talbot's the current president of the Brookings Institute. 
that he wrote in Time Magazine in July 20th of 1992. He stated, the big question these days is which political forces will prevail? Those stitching nations together or those that are tearing them apart? This is in 92. He said, I'll bet that within the next 100 years, nationhood as we know it will be obsolete. All states will recognize a single global authority. A phrase briefly fashionable in the mid 20th century. Citizen of the world. That's their goal. Will have, and they will have assumed real meaning by the end of the 21st century. Citizen of the world. That's their goal. All countries are basically social arrangements, accommodations to changing circumstances. No matter how permanent and even sacred they may seem at any one time, in fact, they are artificial. They are all artificial and temporary. Empires uh, were a powerful force for obliterating natural and demographic barriers and forging connections among far flung parts of the world. The empire eventually yielded to the nation state. Think of the Roman Empire, the, the, the Holy Roman Empire, trying to protect a certain uh, area. They, these made up uh, primarily of the single tribe. I, I, or today it would be considered the United States, its own state. The main goal driving the process of political expansion and consolidation was conquest. The big absorbed the small, the strong absorbed the weak. This is throughout history. And national uh, might made mass, national might made international right. Such a world was in more or less a constant state of war. He states he stated perhaps national sovereignty wasn't such a great idea after all. So there you have it. It's one of the ways that we're talking about, and it was one of the largest uh, issues in the presidential campaign was the issue of open borders versus closing the borders, the process, the ongoing process of globalization. From here to Armageddon, a new exciting eight lesson series to share with your friends and family. Order yours right away. Answering many questions like, how far are we from the Battle of Armageddon? What will happen between now and then? Where are we on the timeline? Your questions answered in this exciting eight lesson series from here to Armageddon. Go to endtime.com or call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-END-TIME, 1-800-363-8463. Order yours right away. I know someone's praying for you can be cliche, and some might think that it's just a saying. But here at End Time Ministries, we actually are praying for you. Irvin and the End Time team begin each morning by taking your name directly to the Lord in prayer for our partners and requests submitted by each of you the previous day. The Bible tells us in Matthew 18, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. We may not know each of you personally, but we feel like we are very much connected because you are one of the reasons that this ministry is able to spread our message throughout the entire world. We know this can be a very difficult time for everyone. That makes you partnering with us through prayer and your giving very special. Call 1-800-END-TIME or go to endtime.com and partner with End Time today. You can help make a world impact. If your station only carries the first 30 minutes of End of the Age, go to endtime.com and click the watch button to continue today's broadcast. You can also finish up later by clicking the archives button. Well, everybody, we're, we're talking about a world government that's going to be established just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I'm taking you through the process of globalization. We talk about it all the time, but it's so important that you understand that this world governing body has already been established. And we're going to live through this. And all the, 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 there's the final seven years coming up. It's just ahead of us. And if we, you know, if we were to take time today, which I'm not going to, but we could walk through the timeline that's just ahead of us in the, the Six Trumpet War, the, the peace agreement, all of the different things that are going to happen. We're going to live through all of that. Should God tarry and allow all of us to make it, 
We're going to live through this. And so it's very important. You say, well, why do you guys talk about this world governing body all the time? The church is going to be gone when all of this takes place. Actually, we need to, we'll talk about that on another program. If you understand what we teach here, what we believe, we believe that the church will be raptured at the end of the tribulation period, not before. The Bible doesn't teach a pre-tribulation rapture. So that's why we talk about the world government that's going to be established, the world religion. We talk about the mark of the beast. We talk about the rebuilding of the third temple, the signing of the peace agreement, because we're going to be here through all that. Think about it. I just read the scripture in Revelation 13 where the Bible says that the Antichrist had power, was, there was given power in him to continue for 42 months and that he made war against the saints. Well, if the saints are gone, there's not two sets of saints in the end time. There's only one bride. And the Bible says that he, the Antichrist made war against the saints. Well, if the saints are raptured, who's he making war against? There's only one set of saints in the New Testament. That's the church. There's only one bride. He's only coming back once to collect his one bride. So the church is going to go through all of this. You wonder why Irvin and myself and the rest of us always talk about this world government. And why are we talking about these prophecies? Because we're going to live through this time. And we need to understand what's going on. There's some things you will never, ever, ever want to do. Number one, you don't want to be a part of the world religion. All of this huge interfaithism, these ecumenical movements that are happening, drawing all the religions of the world together and under one ideology. We all worship the same God, regardless of whether you worship Buddha or Satan or you're a, a, a Wiccan, or which is a witch, or whether you worship rocks. They don't care what you worship as long as you kind of get this um, idea in your head that we kind of all worship this same being. We just call him different names. There's a one world religion that's being set up right now. You've heard of all these interfaith movements. You absolutely do not want to be a part of that. And then the world government that's being established. You, you, can't never, you can never be a part of that. They're going to eventually use the mark of the beast to economically sanction you to get you to conform, to, to bow to the edicts of this one world governing body. You absolutely cannot do that. The Bible says that in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 through 18, that the Antichrist is going to give everybody their own, the Antichrist, the false prophet, the whole mess is going to give everybody their own unique identification number and in the right hand or in the forehead. And without that, you're not going to be able to buy or sell. So they're going to economically sanction you just like they sanction nations right now. Think about it. When, when they wanted Iran not to build nuclear weapons, we put heavy sanctions on them. We crippled them economically. When Russia annexed Crimea in 2014, we put heavy sanctions on them, economic sanctions. Well, that's the international, that's the world government's um, method of enforcement, economic sanctions. So they're going to want to do the same thing to you on a personal level. They're going to give you your own unique identification number, everybody on earth. And then they're going to get you to... to um, have to have to be um, you have to have that the number to be able to buy or sell. And so you're going to have to have that to function in society, to get gas, to buy groceries, um, to pay your taxes, everything. And then they're going to say, well, you either bow down to our edicts or we're going to invalidate your number. You ever walk up to a gas pump to get gas, swipe your card and it says, no, it's not valid. And you're, you're not going to get gas that day. Something may have happened with your debit card, you overdrawn, whatever. But if, if, if it's, there's a, there is a database somewhere that's controlling all of that, that says, nope, Dave Robbins can't get gas today. You're, you had an invalid number right now because something's wrong with your card. Well, that's how they do it. They're going to economically sanction you individually. And so that, the thing is, though, you can never comply with that. Two things you should never do to make sure you don't ever take the mark of the beast. You say, why are you telling me this? Because we're going to live through this time. It's just ahead of us. We're already watching men, many precursors to the mark of the beast system being set up right now. I had a real good partner of ours uh, send me an article today on facial recognition. And he was saying for $1,000, you could set this up in your business. He sent me the documentation on it today where you could, you could um, use facial recognition to identify any, any of your clients and different things. 
And so we're watching precursors of this stuff being set up all the time. We're going to live through that. Two things you should never do to make sure you don't take the mark of the beast. Never take a mark of identification on your person at all. Not a chip, not, a, not a, um, a, an invisible tattoo, anything like that. No mark of identification on your person. Number two, never pledge allegiance to, thereby worshiping, the Antichrist or his world governing system. You can never pledge allegiance to that. Ban Ki-moon, the leader, uh, the uh, Secretary General of the United Nations has already said there's only one true flag for the citizens of the world and that's the blue flag of the United Nations. There will come a time, just like we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, there will come a time when they will say, you pledge allegiance to this blue flag of the United Nations. You cannot do that. The only reason I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America is because it says one nation under God. If they took under God out of there, I couldn't say that pledge anymore because I can't pledge my allegiance to anything but God. So in the, the United Nations, that's a totally godless entity. This world governing body, it's totally humanitarian. It's not... There's no, um, there, there's no God factor in there at all. Zero. And so consequently, there, that's two of the things you cannot do to make sure you don't take the mark of the beast. We're going to live through this. That's why I'm talking to you today about this world government. We talk about it all the time. It was the, the process of globalization moving us towards this world governing body. It was, in our mind, the largest issue... Um, in this presidential campaign. And that's why we talked about it a lot because Hillary Clinton was for totally opening the borders, bringing in all of these refugees, giving all of the illegal immigrants amnesty, I mean, just free open borders, whatever. Do away with the borders. She was for that because she's a globalist. She believes in a world governing body. Trump, on the other hand, and I hope he follows through with this, but he said, I'm going to build a wall and you say, well, he's against um, everybody, all, uh, all of the uh, people living in Mexico. No, he's not. He's against illegals coming into our country. Um, that's what he was against. And so consequently, he's saying, I'm going to build a wall and you can come through the door, but you can come through legally. Any other, try to go to Israel today and say, well, I just come in and I'm going to live here. They'll say, no, 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 you're not. You, you, they, that just doesn't happen. And so consequently, the United Nations doesn't like Israel either. And so that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to do away with the borders and they're trying to set up a world governing body to enforce its edicts upon the world. That's what they're trying to do. So I've got another article that I want to read from today because it's very critical and it's talking. A lot of us are wondering, what about Trump? What's he finally going to do? Well, none of us will know that until he gets in office and starts doing it. Will he move the uh, embassy, the United States embassy to Jerusalem? That's going to be a telltale sign for us. Let's all, myself, Irvin, all of us, everybody listening, let's see what President-elect Trump will do when it comes time to move the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem. That's going to be a telltale sign of where he really stands. You understand that they have a clause now, all the presidents, that says it, it, it was passed in 95 that, hey, we're going to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. But every six months, the, the, the United States, uh, the president of the United States uh, has an option to sign a waiver that says we're not going to do that in the interest of national security. But Donald Trump said, no, I'm going to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, in the face of the, the international community, I don't care what they say, I don't care what they think, I'm going to do it. So that will be really one of the telltale signs if he's really going to do what he says he's going to do in the face of this international community. Will he move the United States Embassy to Jerusalem? And it's going to, it's going to come right up to him in next in June. So we'll find out what's going to happen within the first six months if he's really going to fly in the face of the international community. You say, well, 
why are, why, uh, why are you talking about this right now? I'll just explain it to you and then I'll get to the article. It's very, very important. Because we believe that if you, you remember the, in the first part of the program, when I read the, um, the Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 through 8, and it was talking about, it gave the nations, the, the animal symbols which represented nations that would be involved in this world governing body. Way back in Daniel chapter 7, Daniel saw a vision of a lion with eagle's wings, a bear, a four-headed leopard, and a ten-horned beast that he couldn't describe. He'd never seen anything like it. Well, if you followed this ministry at all, you understand that the, United, the um, lion was Great Britain. It symbolized, the Bible says it, they symbolized kingdoms or nations, and that they, Daniel 7 tells us that these nations would be on the earth at the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Well, the lion is Great Britain. The eagle's wings on the back of the lion, that's the United States. The bear is Russia. The four-headed leopard is Germany. And the ten-horned beast is the revived Holy Roman Empire or the current European Union. When you jump to Daniel 13, or Revelation 13, it gives a depiction of a combo beast. All of those separate nations in Daniel 7 are now formed into one big combo beast. And the Bible says it had the body of the leopard, the feet of the bear, the mouth of the lion, the, the, and, the, the, uh, the, and then the ten horned beast. The, it had those seven heads represented there. And the ten horned beast uh, was the seventh head. That's the world governing body that's going to be established. Remember, it's given power over all kingdoms, tongues, nations. And so um, it's going to be a world governing body. The only thing is the United States, the eagle's wings are not mentioned there. Jump back a chapter, Revelation chapter 12. The Bible says at the time, during the time of the tribulation, that Israel was carried away on the wings of a great eagle where she is nursed in her place for time, times, and half a time. During the great tribulation. We believe America will pull out of this world governing body and stand with Israel all the way to the end. I believe we can prove that script conclusively using the prophecies of the Bible. So that's why we talk about this, because here comes a president in 2016, or a president-elect, he hasn't taken office, he'll do that in January, that says, I'm against the United Nations. I'm, I'm, I'm flying in the face of all this. All the globalists and the elitists that want to establish a world governing body, they want to tear down the borders, I'm going to build a wall. And so we're looking at this saying, okay, is Trump going to pull us out of this world governing body and stand with Israel all the way to the end? I tell you what we'll do. We'll talk about it a little more when we come back from the break because it's very, very important. We're going to live through these times just ahead. If ever people need to hear the unvarnished truth, it is now. There are some subjects that are not politically correct to talk about, but they're urgent. That's why I'm grateful for End Time Magazine. If you're not a subscriber, you're missing information that will really impact your life. End Time has a bi-monthly magazine that explains how current events are fulfilling Bible prophecy. You can get a two-year subscription for only $29. You can also get a bulk subscription and pass them out to your church. We have gotten reports that End Time Magazine has caused spiritual awakenings in churches when they see the prophecies being fulfilled right now. You can start your own ministry and leave them in doctor's offices, libraries, laundromats. You never know if you might be responsible for saving someone who is searching for the unvarnished truth. That's what the magazine did in my life. Call 1-800-363-8463. That's 1-800-END-TIME and get your subscription today. So just before the break, we were talking about how it's possible that President-elect Donald Trump would, we see him as maybe somebody, now I can't guarantee this, but we're watching it, and that's why we watched it so close over the campaign trail. Could he be possibly him, Pence, somebody, be the one that pulls us out of this United Nations body and the world governing body, and we, stand, we pull back... We stand with Israel all the way to the end. You understand that 
uh, what about um, over the past several years, we've used our veto power to protect Israel. I think it was like 41 or 42 times. And a lot of times in the United Nations, there's a vote of 191 to 2. And it's the United States and Israel standing by themselves. So we believe that there is coming somebody on the horizon, if it's not Trump, somebody else, who would pull us out of the United Nations body and we'll stand with Israel all the way to the end. So let me read you an article I have from the National Interest. And it says, how Trump replaced America's globalist consensus, those that believe in a world government, with a nationalist sensibility. It's very important. It says the old order of American politics crumbled on November 8th with an election that signaled an inflection point in the nation's history. It's a very critical point in the nation's history right now. Donald Trump's victory shattered the globalist or the world, people that believe in a world government, their consensus of America's governing elite, and it replaced us with, placed it with a nationalist sensibility exemplified in the slogan, America First. Globalists were wanting to tear down America and tear it apart. They were wanting to deconstruct it so they could reconstruct it in the form of a world government. Whereas Donald Trump come along flying in the face of that. It says that the globalist consensus contained a number of central tenets, all rejected by Trump. They had things they wanted to accomplish in their belief system. These were all rejected by Trump during the campaign. And these are a few of the ideologies that are held. I'm going to give you a list held by a globalist or an individual who believes in a world government. This is what the ruling elite in the United States, this is their ideology, that the nation state is in decline and is being replaced by an emergent multinational super institutions such as the European Union, the United Nations, which is the world government on earth today, and presumably which would have been Hillary Clinton's proposed hemispheric common market with open trade and open borders. That's what the elitist in the United States, those that are trying to establish a world government, that's what they believe. That was their ideology. Border, it's, they also um, think that borders have lost their significance. Do you, let me ask you today listening to me, do you believe that the borders of the United States have lost their significance? If the answer was no, I totally agree with you. They believe that borders have lost their significance as nationalist sentiments have receded. I don't agree with that. My nationalist sentiment hasn't receded. I love the United States of America. It's the greatest nation on earth. And while something probably needs to be done about illegal immigration, they believe that largely to assuage political pressures, there's nothing essentially wrong with mass immigration. How do you stand on that? Free today is an imperative in the post-Cold War era of globalization to lubricate global commerce and spur global prosperity. They want to have these trans-Pacific partner trade deals and these things which take jobs from America. Trump has said, America first. We're going to bring those jobs back. They also believe that despite the advent of the Islamist radicalism, Fueled primarily by intense anti-Western fervor, there is no reason to believe that large numbers of Muslims can't be assimilated into Western societies smoothly without a detriment to those societies. Even though they want to establish Sharia law worldwide, globally. Now, there are peaceful Muslims. I, I, I know that. But you just got to study that religion. That's all I'm going to say. So the article goes on to say this globalist consensus was embraced by American presidents from, now think about this, that what I just read you, this was embraced by American presidents, George Bush Sr. He, he spoke about a, a new world order all the time. They believed in a world government. Bill Clinton believed in a world government. George H.W. Bush believed in a world government. President Obama believes in a world government. Hillary Clinton should she have been elected, she's a one-worlder. She believes in a world government. It was so entrenched within the top echelons of American society, the federal bureaucracy, the media, academia, big corporations, big finance, Hollywood, 
You think they haven't been pushing world government? Look at all the look at all the um, the Hollywood stars that have come out and pushing global or uh, climate change, global warming. Also, think tanks and charitable foundations that hardly anyone could conceptualize any serious threat to. Then Trump attacked it and, and marshaled a rowdy following of people bent on upending it. The globalists, those that believe in a world government, their sensibility is not going to go away. But it is now seriously challenged now that President-elect uh, Trump has come on the scene. And the result is a new fault line in American politics. On the other hand, the Trump constituency, it rejects most of those central tenets of the post-Cold War consensus. Here's what he believes. The American experiment in nation building with an attendant prop propensity for regime change has been an utter failure, particularly in the Middle East, and needs to be replaced. America must be in the world but shouldn't try to dominate it. I totally agree with that. He goes on to say, he believes nationalism is a hallowed sentiment. I agree with that. It's tied to old-fashioned patriotism and shouldn't be denigrated or rejected. I'm going to venture to say, most of you listening to me agree with that wholeheartedly. Most of you would consider yourselves patriots. Many of you, a lot of our partners, a lot of people that we are uh, in partnership with that follow this ministry, have been following Irvin Baxter for, in this ministry for years, are veterans. And they believe, it, they have a patriotism for this country. I totally, 100% agree with you. And I stand behind you 100% and I, I might say, I thank you for your service. Thank you very much. I don't think you're thanked enough for all that you've done. So if you're a veteran out there, let me say, thank you, thank you, thank you. My stepdad went through Vietnam. He went through some unbelievable stuff. And so I do thank you very much for your service today. If you are a veteran, whether you're affiliated with End Time at all or not, wherever you are, wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because there are people who would like to tear this nation apart a nation that our American soldiers have fought and died, shed their blood for. There are people who would like to tear that apart and say, let's yield all this up. Let's, let's, rip, let's deconstruct this country that we fought and died for. Let's deconstruct that and let's reconstruct it in the image of this world governing body. And I, I totally, totally disagree with that. I don't want anything to do with this world government. Remember, Satan's behind all that. God's behind, and really, honestly, what we should be establishing is a godly country, a country that's built upon, and originally, we were built upon godly principles. We have inalienable rights given to us by our Creator, not by government, but by Creator. And I stand behind that. If Without God, I'm telling you, everybody listening, please, without God, there is, we have nothing. We wouldn't even exist without God. So for these people who believe in a world government to say, well, we know how to run things. It's a totally godless entity. Let's deconstruct the United States and uh, reconstruct it in the mold of this one world governing body with no God at the helm. I, I'm, I will never conform to that. I can tell you right, right now. I'm never going to conform to this world governing body. The, the next tenet that Trump agrees with is that the identity uh, group politics is eroding national cohesion, and though political correctness is threatening free speech on the country's college campuses and elsewhere, that threat will grow throughout society if not checked. I totally agree with that. He also says that borders matter. Well, I think you know where Irvin and myself stand on that. We absolutely agree we should have borders. Countries without clearly delineated and enforced borders soon cease to be countries. Immigration numbers should be calibrated to ensure a smooth absorption and assimilated legally. And then, of course, free trade. As practiced in the post-Cold War era, it is killing us. All of our jobs are leaving the country. And all we have is, is just menial stuff. I mean, all of our big manufacturing. Think about, we were the manufacturing king in the world for a long time. 
the industrial age come and the United States was just producing and the world was buying our products. A lot of our countries, a lot of our jobs are leaving the country. President-elect Trump has said it was, it was a resonating point that he made. I'm going to bring all the jobs back. And it says that, um, that these trade deals were killing us, hollowing out the country's industrial base and devastating its middle class. So, folks, uh, uh, let me, let me kind of summarize what we've talked about on the program today. Very, very, very critical the Bible says that there is a world government that's going to be established just prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's really going to get teeth during the last three and a half years prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ. There is a final seven year period, the final three and a half years in the midst of that seven year period, the Antichrist will stand in the temple, proclaim to be God. That Bible says he's revealed at that time and, and he's given power to continue 42 months, that final three and a half years. So it's absolutely critical that we understand several things. The world government's going to be established. There will come a politician out of Europe, not out of the Middle East, out of Europe, that will assume control of that world governing body for that final three and a half years. He's going to be considered, he's going to be called the Antichrist. And he is going to be, he'll be many times worse than Hitler. He's going to persecute the, he's going to persecute Israel. He's going to persecute the church. And he's going to persecute those who will not conform to his edicts. Gorbachev said in his book, Perestroika, that we need to extirpate all religious exclusiveness. Anybody who will not conform to this one world religion, this one world governing body, they don't want to conform to that ideology. Gorbachev said, we need to kill them off, extirpate them. Well, that, it, it appears that some of that will happen. Now, he's not going to have his thumb on every person in the world. There will be pockets of resistance. We're hoping that the United States is one of those pockets of resistance, and it will be a lighthouse to the world, a bastion of freedom, and that we will have great revival. We know prophetically there's great revivals coming just ahead. But there's also going to be the world, a world government established. So my point to you today is be ready. Remember, the Bible says that everyone whose name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, they will worship this entity. They will pledge allegiance to this world religion and this world government. And so it's, it's, it's absolutely essential that you get, get your life right. Live for God. Get a relationship with God. Be born again according to the New Testament plan of salvation and make sure that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and you have an eternal hope. On tomorrow's program, I'll talk to you about the eternal hope that we have in just the near future. You don't have to live in fear during this time. There is a hope for all of us. is a production of End Time Ministries. This broadcast will be available on our website, endtime.com, in the archive section. On our website, you'll also find more information about how current events are fulfilling Bible prophecy. To reach our operators, call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463. End Time Ministries is partner-supported. We would like to say thank you to our partners who made this broadcast possible. To do what Matthew 24, 14 said, to reach the world with the gospel of the kingdom.